Hello everyone, let's uh, take a quick look at what we learned last quarter for calculus, all right? We're just going to take a look at the basics. Uh, calculus basically comes in two parts. You got your derivatives and you got your integrals. And one is kind of like the inverse of the other as we learned last quarter. Now we learned like about four uh, ways of taking derivatives. There was the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. Integrals we didn't learn as much. We're really going to go into it this time around. Uh, integrals we learned um, the power rule and the substitution method which is basically comes from the chain rule. Let's take a look at the power rule for derivatives. And this is it. You simply take whatever number that's in here, you're going to subtract one from it, and bring it down and multiply it by this number in the front. Let's look at an example. 6x cubed, and you want to take the derivative? Well, you simply take 3 times 6, which is 18, and you subtract 1 from the 3 and get the 2. Very simple. How about this one? All right, take 4 times 4 and get the 16, subtract 1 from this 4, and you get a 3 as the exponent. Now, here are two terms. But you can just do each one individually. x to the fifth, well, you're going to get 5x and subtract 1 from the 5 and get the 4 there. This one, 4 times 3, 12. Subtract from the 4 and you get a 3 there. So this is your answer, 5x to the fourth plus 12x cubed. Now let's look at the product rule. The product rule is just a little more complicated. Notice you've taken the derivative, you've got two functions you're multiplying together. Took the derivative of the first function, multiplied by the second, plus the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second. Sounds complicated, it really isn't. Take a look at this. You could take the derivative of this, which we placed here, 4x cubed, and then just copy this one there. And then do it in the other direction. Take the derivative of this one, which is just 2x, you'll put that there, and copy this one here, and then multiply it together and you'll get this. Notice you could add these two terms together and get 6x to the fifth also. This is kind of made up because you could have just distributed this in the beginning and used the same rule, the power rule that we used on the slide before, but I want to show you the product rule. Now here you have to use the product rule, you really have no choice. So you took the derivative of the first function, goes there, the sine is copied over. Now you take the derivative of the sine, which we know is cosine, and you just copy this one over. And that would be the derivative of that one, derivative. Quotient rule, well, it looks like that. I kind of avoid this myself simply because it is complicated, but uh, when you need it, you need it. What can you say? If you're taking the derivative of two quotient of two functions, this is exactly how you would do it. Let's look at an example of that. So let's say you've taken 3x divided by sine x. Okay, this function is the gx, so you just write it there, times the derivative of the first one, which is just 3, minus, and now you took the derivative of the bottom, which will give you the cosine x, times this one, which you don't take the derivative of, in this case, that'll be your f of x, and then you take the denominator squared. Okay. Looks complicated. A couple times. Uh, the chain rule. Chain rule is very important. It simply says if you're taking the function of a function, f of g of x, take the function, the derivative of the outside function acting on g of x, and then take the derivative of the inside function. And here's an example. Let's say you want to take sine x squared. Okay, so your outside function is sine, your inside function is squaring. So take the derivative of the outside function first, leave this alone, then take the derivative of the inside. Here's the same problem, but it's in reverse. Notice the outside function now is the squaring function, the inside is sine. So you take the derivative of the squaring function, you all know that the derivative of x squared is 2x. That's exactly what we do here. And then you took the derivative of the inside. 
You can see your answers are completely different, but of course I switched the order of the uh, composition here. Here's an interesting one. Your outside function is the um, square root function. Your inside is this. So let's first rewrite the squaring function as an exponent to the one half. Now you can just use the power rule on it. Bring the one half down, subtract one from one half, that's negative one half, which basically puts the square root in the denominator. And then you took the derivative of the inside, which is simply two. This two and this one half cancel, and you're left with this. Try that on your calculator, you'll see that the derivative of this is this, and it works every time. The power rule for integration, well, that's simply the power rule for um, derivatives, but in reverse. Now, instead of subtracting one from n, we're adding it. Instead of multiplying by n, we're going to divide by it. Okay? So if you were <coughs> taking the um, derivative of a x to the n, add one to this first, put it down here, and then go x to the n plus one. Notice you took the derivative of this, you'll end up with this again. Here's an example. 6x cubed. Add 1 to 3, you get 4, and then divide by it. You get this, um, this uh, term plus your constant of integration. This simplifies to that, and you're done. All right, here's a definite integral. It's a definite integral because I threw in some limits on it. Take uh, the power rule on this. You'll end up with um, basically x to the fourth over 4 plus an x here. When you uh, evaluate it, you put a 2 where all the x's is. So you get 2 to the fourth over 4 plus 2. When you put 0 in here, it just disappears. Your answer is 6. If you have integration of odd functions, you've got a real advantage. Check and see if you have odd functions and see if your limits of integration are um, inverses of each other. Here you got a 2 and a negative 2. This is an odd function, this is an odd function, this is an even function. I'm going to rewrite this guy so the odd functions are here and the even functions over here. Why? Because when you take the integration of an odd function over um, limits that are inverses of each other, your answer is always zero. So this whole thing's going to drop out. The only thing you have to integrate is this thing. And we're going to integrate that, and we get 16 over third. We were able to write zero here. This zero represents this whole thing. Why? Because these are both odd functions. The substitution method uh, we're talking about this time also works in very uh, very specific cases. If you got a function of two uh, composite of two functions, and the derivative of the inner function is outside, you can rewrite it as this, and you're simplifying it. That works really nice um, when it works. Uh, unfortunately, you can't use this all the time, but um, when it works, here's an example. You've got two functions here. Here's your inner function. The outer function is you're raising to the third power. Notice that the derivative of the inside is over here, just a 2. That means you could do a, a substitution. We'll let u equal 2x plus 1. So du equals 2dx. Well, good. Put the u in here. And the 2 and the dx will become the du. And you get that. That one worked out real nice. Uh, now, notice your answer shouldn't be left in the form of u because you did a substitution. So what we did here at the end is we substituted for u here what u is equal to, 2x plus 1. So this is your actual answer. Cosine cubed sine x. This is just a simple... Um, uh, substitution. We will talk about these under trigonometric substitution, but this one can be done as a simple substitution. Why? Because the derivative of the cosine is negative the sine. 
So let u equal cosine x. Notice that when you took the derivative, you got this extra negative here. There is no negative in this thing, so you've got to kind of carry that over and uh, when you do your substitution. And that's where this negative sign came from. It came from here. So cosine becomes u is raised to the third power. Its derivative is outside. This whole thing had to be replaced with du, and we had to bring over the negative sign. Do your substitution, do your integration first, and then do your substitution, and that's what you get. Simple, right? We'll talk about more about integration this quarter. And I think that's all I wanted to talk about, and that is the end.